stuff, guys. Welcome to Mad Science Films. I'm Jimmy P, filmmaker and sexual astronaut. And as ever, I'm joined by my premium co-host. Premium. Yeah, James Morrissey, one half of the Mad Science Films team. So guys, you've been liking these videos and, well, if you like this video, then please hit the like button. If you're enjoying the Mad Science content, then come follow us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. Any comments or suggestions, leave us in the comment section down below. Let's crack over the show. Noise. Also, guys, please check out our full feature film for free over on YouTube. Just search for Little Monster or click on the link in the show notes below. This week, we're campaigning for a forgotten masterpiece of genre cinema to be given the exquisite Blu-ray treatment. And again, I'm hogging it. I've gone. I'm picking my choice. And I've decided to inflict 1987's Beyond the Seventh Door from Bozida di Benedict. Hmm. Mm. You're right, Jim. I can't see you there. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's let's synopsisize this first. After meeting up with his ex-lover Wendy, an ex-convict and thief named Boris gets to, persuaded to do one more heist. He is supposed to help Wendy rob her paraplegic millionaire boss, Lord Breston, for whom she has been working as a housemaid. But things turn out to be much more complicated than expected. There we go. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, Jim. First time watch? Yeah, first time for me. Um, <laughs> and, and last time? <laughs> oh, God, where do you start with this one? Um, you know, it's important, I think, for a film to, you know, if you can have a protagonist, a hero, he's got to be good. <laughs> like this, it's undoubtedly this guy. So Lazar Rockwood, which I'm assuming is his Hollywood um, surname, I mean, it, uh, I, he's Serbian, so I mean, Lazar could be like James or John. His surname is Rajik. Uh, so Lazar Rajik turned Lazar Rockwood. So, yeah, he's definitely uh, dreaming of being a Hollywood um, leading man, and he just isn't that. Um, the acting was pretty poor. Uh, the script was pretty poor um there was some really unnecessarily long sequences that just just whether in his head he thought that he was building suspense but it just no uh really bored me like there's these bits where like he's taken off his belt to to lower this extension cord down to save wendy and it just took fucking forever um you know, and, and then even when he was putting the belt back on, it's like, cut to something else. Like, he just was putting the, it's like, come on, what the fuck? So, um, I mean, the idea, I guess, was probably original at the time. Not many films doing that kind of, like, trapped in a building. You've got to solve puzzles and games to kind of survive. So, I guess, I can't think of anything around the 80s that was kind of doing that, or if there was many at all. I'll, I'll come to that later. There's, there's some, but... Yeah. But, so Not you can, in the same genre, yeah. Yeah, you can give it a bit of credit for that. Uh, the music was quite cool at the beginning. Um, yeah, it had a bit of a nice eighties. Well, it was eighties, wasn't it? So it had a nice feel to the music. I just really struggled with it, mate. I, I just it, it, it was it. The tension wasn't there. It wasn't. You didn't. You never really felt like they were in trouble um, at any one moment. Um, yeah, I just, I just, I'm not a big fan, unfortunately. I'm that's not a big okay, fan. Jim. It wasn't, wasn't so bad that it was entertaining either. Like, there are films, which I'll probably mention later, which were really bad, but entertaining, uh, you know, at the same time. But this just, I just didn't feel it. I just didn't feel it. So, yeah. That's all right, mate. That's all right. I can't, I can't convert you every time, I guess. But, no. okay. So, I watched this. Uh, I, I was, I don't know, I think I was in the mood just to put something on and let it wash over me. So, I, again, I think expectations are always very important when you're putting a film on. Now, I thought this was uh, like some sort of Italian exorcist ripoff. I, I, the, the title in my head, I was sure it was like something, perhaps it was Beyond the Door or, or something. Anyway. Yeah. So I put it on uh, and I wasn't expecting to pay attention. You know, basically, I was going to do some phone browsing and just have something Italian batshit on in the background. But very early on, I realized, wait a sec, this isn't Italian. This is Canadian um, crime explo uh, exploitation B movie um, with this weird guy playing Boris at the aforementioned Lazar 
Rockwood um, and Bonnie and Bonnie Beck, the actress. So, as you said, mate, Lazar and Bonnie are not great actors. Now, Lazar cannot act at all, and I think Bonnie overacts slightly, uh, and I'll come back to that. But yeah, but once you adjust to that, <laughs> and I would say it's easier to adjust to it because they're they're pretty much the only two actors in actors in the film the characters in the film it's easier it was easier for me anyway to adjust to their <laughs> acting deficiencies um and then yeah once once i adjusted to that i had fun with this fun stripped down heist movie you know um i love the fact that boris isn't presented as like this ultra competent thief you know like often in in movies nowadays he'd have to be the world's best thief you know tom cruise super competent at everything this guy is a loser it's his first day out of prison he runs into an ex-girlfriend he falls straight into another job a great line that i love i think sums up the whole film is Wendy just says face it boris you're not even a good thief yeah. <laughs> and he says i'm getting better yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that sums up the film for me these guys yeah. are losers and it's not something you see you know often when you're doing crime films it's like you know one last job you know they're 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 the great people you know the oceans 11s guys or whatever these guys are bottom of the barrel they have no other options in their lives so they're forced to do this i mean wendy is supposed to be a housemaid according to the synopsis she's basically a hooker for her paraplegic billionaire boss you know you know she dresses like a slut um, and and I totally love the concept of these guys who've got no other option. They they are you know hinted at that there's some treasure in the basement, and then they find themselves yeah in this weird kind of thing. And I love the ingenuity of this low budget thing. So I don't think many sets themselves were built. I think there were locations that they set dressed right. And I love the fact that, you know, they basically use these industrial kind of things and then trick them out to look like there were these death traps. I mean, my notes say it's like Indiana Jones in an industrial setting. And one of my recommendations is, you know, very much an Indiana Jones movie because it, it feels like that kind of thing. Um, I And yeah, these aren't the smartest people. These are guys who make mistakes and, you know, they're, they're trying to work out, they're trying to use like basic knowledge or whatever and trying to figure it out um and i also really like the twist which is a twist i didn't see coming and i i what i will say is i think watching it for the third time which i did last night knowing the twist going in actually somehow improves bonnie beck's performance because mm. I, I don't want to say too much because it goes into spoilers but it makes a lot more sense um yeah i i absolutely take on board the acting isn't great what's weird is lazar has has a long career i mean he's still working today it, yeah, this is his first feature yeah. film so also let's let's give him that let's you know forgive him that his first feature film perhaps he was a bit awkward on camera um perhaps the director you know bozida d benedict wasn't the greatest director um but i love the concept I love the characters, not necessarily the, the acting, but I love the characters of these two losers who've got nowhere to go. Um, and yeah, again, maybe it was expectations. I was going in, you know, not expecting to pay attention to an Italian exorcist ripoff, and I got something I absolutely wasn't expecting, which I was intrigued. So, yeah, um, well, let's agree that you're wrong. <laughs> I agree, though, with the title. Uh, that, that was a bit misleading. I was expecting some type of Italian supernatural kind of horror. Yeah, uh, yeah. Definitely wasn't that. So... Um, did you not Did you not feel for the couple at the end, uh, before the big twist, that I, you know, she was begging him. She was like, Boris, don't be an idiot. Don't be greedy. Just, we're out. Let's let's stay out. And when he goes back in, no, you, you weren't feeling it? I did. <laughs> No, you checked out by that point. I was like, oh, I, it, to be honest, but even that was a bit boring. It was like, I, I I felt like I just, I didn't really know the characters. Like, I couldn't connect with it. Like, you know, they wouldn't give me enough to, so I could fully connect with. And I guess if I was connecting, like, if you switch out these two and put, you know, Big Trouble Little China's Kurt Russell and Kim Cattrall in their, in their places, then perhaps it could sell it a bit better to me and I could be a bit more invested 
in, yeah. in the characters, but um I fully admit I was doing a lot of the heavy lifting because the actors weren't conveying it. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know, I, I was I was listening and, and again I've watched this three times now. So I was listening to the dialogue and I was kind of going, okay, you know, I was picking up every hint that the actors should have been able to convey with a look or just a line reading. So you absolutely get that. And again, mm -hmm. I think if you had and again, my apologies to Lazar and Bonnie Beck. I don't like, you know, knocking every anybody. But I think if you had decent actors well directed in this, it would have been an absolute knockout. Yeah, I think with a better better acting and better directing, I think this could have been a good film. Um yeah, definitely. But I just didn't didn't quite connect with it. Oh, um, that's fair enough, man. That's fair enough. Yeah. All righty, Jim. So uh -huh. bearing in mind your thoughts on the film. Which boutique Blu-ray label are you going to ask to put this out? <laughs> I fucking struggle with this one. Mm. Um, I don't know. I mean, Vinegar Syndrome, possibly. they got some quirky films on there. Yeah, uh, that's, that's who I've gone with, Vinegar. It, to me, it strikes me as the perfect fit for them. Yeah. They they do kind of, and, and no offence to Vinegar, I mean in this in the best possible way. They scrape the bottom of the barrel. And as we know, sometimes at the bottom of the barrel, there are yeah, 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 to mix with some metaphors. Um, I mean, if uh, 88 films, maybe I don't really know, you know, but yeah, uh, but know. for those two, I mean, definitely vinegar syndrome, though. So, yeah, 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 no, absolutely agree with that. Oh. Absolutely agree. Um, uh, okay, mate. So, you've watched Beyond the Seventh Door, you want to salvage the night. <laughs> what film are you going to watch next? Well, I mean, if you like the the heist aspect of this um, and you were expecting horror, then perhaps go for Army of the Dead. Not the best film ever, but it is entertaining. Particularly if you like zombies in very shallow depth of field. Um, from Dust Till Dawn, a classic there. Uh, criminals facing some horrific uh, enemies. Um if you <laughs> if you really like bad acting but you want to be entertained, Jim, you're probably going to recommend this one as well. Uh, you know, Lazar reminds me a lot of Tommy Wiseau. Um, so The Room, uh, a terrible film, but entertaining for all the wrong reasons. So check out The Room. Um, and if you're into the kind of deadly game, puzzles and all that kind of stuff, your life depends upon it, then check out uh, Cube uh or saw which is a good good film so yeah yeah no i didn't have the room but i did have cube yeah um oh. and then yeah going with the puzzle kind of aspect indiana jones and the last crusades you know that's again the opposite spectrum of acting and budget and filmmaking yeah. competence but you know it's got that kind of same thing and the goonies as well man that strikes me as a, as a very good thing but yeah, yeah. I, 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 again, I kind of pitch this as the, um, yeah, the Indiana Jones on an industrial estate movie. So yeah, there we go. All righty, guys. Have you seen Beyond the Seventh Door? Did you think it was an exorcist ripoff before watching it? <laughs> yeah. uh, also, guys, what do you think would pair nicely with Beyond the Seventh Door? And are there any other films that you think uh, would make a amazing release on a boutique Blu-ray la la label? And Jim, what else can they do? Well, you can like this video for starters. Uh, if you've been enjoying the content, then come follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. Any comments or suggestions, leave us in the comment section down below. Thank you and goodbye.